Hi, difference in pupil size is termed an isochoria. Based on clinical findings, it can be divided into three groupings. First is an abnormally large pupil. This is obvious in normal lighting, but less so with the lights off, because the other, normal pupil, dilates. Next is an abnormally small pupil. This may not be visible in normal lighting, but with the lights off becomes obvious due to dilation of the normal pupil. Finally is pupil asymmetry up to 2 mm that doesn't change in light or dark. Both pupils change size, but the relative difference remains the same. This is present in up to 20% of normal people and termed physiological anisochoria. Both eyes respond normally to light. Back to the abnormally large pupil, termed a madriasis. The autonomic nervous system controls pupil movement with constriction supplied by the parasympathetic fibres which travel with the third cranial nerve. Loss of the parasympathetic signal causes the pupil to dilate. Look therefore for diplopia or ptosis to suggest a third nerve palsy. This can be caused by berry aneurysm compressing the third nerve, which can accompany and occasionally precede subarachnoid haemorrhage. Here, the affected right eye is dilated, down and out, with a ptosis. A dilated pupil without ptosis or diplopia is unlikely to arise from a third nerve palsy. See the video on third nerve palsy. Another cause may be adystonic pupil. This is characterised by a dilated pupil with little response to light, but which may slowly constrict to accommodative effort and relax slowly as well. Aedes pupil is presumed to be postviral denervation of the pupil sphincter and is common in young women. Slit lamp examination may reveal segmental paralysis and flattening of the pupil border, giving rise to a pupil with an irregular shape. There may also be a vermiform movement of the non-paralysed sections of the iris, literally a worm-like constriction effort. Aedes pupil is confirmed by testing with dilute pilocarpine 0.125% eye drops, which shows constriction within 20 minutes. But this denervation supersensitivity usually takes some weeks to develop after the onset of the Aedes pupil. Although a tonic pupil is usually idiopathic, they may also arise in diabetes, giant cell arteritis and syphilis, where they are usually bilateral, small and termed Argyle-Robertson pupils. Blunt trauma to the eye may tear the pupil sphincter and cause a permanently dilated pupil, clinically similar in appearance to an Aedes pupil. Diplopia after trauma is suggestive of a blowout fracture. Acutely look for an associated high femur, and later for angle recession or retinal dialysis. Previous eye surgery may also have damaged the pupil. Acute glaucoma features a fixed, mid-dilated pupil with brow ache, blurred vision and nausea or vomiting. The cornea is hazy upon slit lamp examination with a very high intraocular pressure. Finally, the commonest cause of a dilated pupil is exposure to dilating drugs. Examples include the eye drops atropine, cyclopenplate and tropicamide. Atropine may dilate the pupil for up to two weeks. Gardeners may inadvertently expose themselves to atropine when cutting back the deadly nightshade or belladonna plant. They present with a dilated pupil, blurred vision and slight photophobia. The pupil is widely dilated and doesn't respond to pilocarpine 1%, but does resolve over a few days. Now, to the abnormally small pupil. Autonomic control of pupil dilation is by the oculosympathetic pathway. This arises in the hypothalamus, descends the brainstem and cervical spinal cord, ascends the cervical sympathetic chain and carotid plexus, and passes through the cavernous venous sinus with the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve. Damage along this pathway is termed a Horner's syndrome and features a small pupil or meiosis, slight ptosis and loss of sweating or anhydrosis on one side of the face. Confirmatory testing with apraclonidine drops reverses the anisochoria and often the ptosis too. See the video on Horner's syndrome for more details. Causes of a Horner's syndrome include carotid artery dissection which is both life-threatening and treatable with anticoagulation. Other causes of a small pupil are current or previous iritis and current or previous pilocarpine eye drops. Some key points once more. Anisochoria may arise due to a lesion impairing the efferent sympathetic or parasympathetic pathway to the eye, or due to factors within the eye itself. The pupil should be examined in both light and dark with distance fixation. Ask about eye trauma or surgery, use of eye drops and gardening. With a dilated pupil, check for ptosis, diplopia and response to dilute and 1% pilocarpine. With a small pupil, confirm Horner's syndrome with apraclonidine drops and investigate further urgently. 
To criticise, comment or share your knowledge with others, please go to iVideos.blogspot.com where you will find transcripts, links and more videos.